Big water kayaking. I think it's about time we raise the volume. Let's talk about high volume rivers. talking about waterfalls, steep gorges, or creeks. Big water kayaking is all about volume. So despite some misconceptions, big water doesn't necessarily mean hard water. You can have a relatively easy run, but still have higher volume features. Big water means stronger features, different features, even weird features. Simple eddy lines can turn into massive boils whirlpools, and you can even find eddies inside of eddies. Waves often appear out of nowhere and crash into temporary but massive holes. Offset wave trains are the norm. Folds of whitewater can even open up like crevasses where you can look down and see a pit. And if you fall into that pit, not only will you go really deep, but you may have no idea where you'll pop up and if you want to go there. Big water's fast. And oftentimes, it's easy to feel like you're out of control. Maneuvering is different than other types of whitewater because you have to really use the water to do the work for you. You can't fight it or force big water the way you can in lower volume creeks and rivers. It's not uncommon for smaller volume rivers to send you to the side or into an eddy if you flip. On high volume rivers, most of the water will try to keep you in the center of the river where all of the action is. That might not be where you want to be. The real secret to going where you want to go on big water rivers is staying on top of the water. It's not allowing yourself to go low. Don't punch into waves, go over them, crash over them. Stay on top of the boils and seams, crossing over the seams instead of following them. Anytime you drop into the seams or folds, on higher volume rivers, you're going to be subject to where they're going. You're not gonna be able to pull out of them and change direction easily. So part of keeping your bow up is learning how to water boof. In big water, you often have features or folds that you can boof rather than using rocks. You can lean boof off of surges, boils, seams, the peaks of waves, even glassy waves you can lean boof to keep your bow high and dry. One of the hardest things to do in big water is to move from one side of the river to the other. I like to use the shoulders of waves with a stroke. Lean into the shoulder and take a stroke on the opposite side but in the same direction to accelerate past a wave. Moving seams can create windows through features you might not want to crash into directly. If you see a boil forming, you can use the boil to push you to the side where you want to go. On big water rivers, being able to make a move to one side or the other, it does require you to think about it ahead of time and maybe work a little harder. But if you do it too soon, the risk of ping-ponging back where you don't want to go or getting rejected and pushed back where you don't want to go is higher. So one of the bigger skills when it comes to big water rivers is learning how to use the vectors. A vector is anytime you have momentum in a specific direction or speed in a specific direction. The direction is what makes it a vector. The same thing happens in whitewater kayaking. If you have a certain amount of speed in one direction and the river has a certain amount of speed and force in another direction, where you go is probably going to be somewhere in the middle. So if you want to speed up and accelerate, you want to change your velocity and take faster, harder strokes in the direction of oncoming water if your goal is to cross it and not to go with it. At the same time, sometimes, if you want to go somewhere, overpowering the river isn't going to be an option. So you'll have to anticipate where those forces are and use them to take you where you want to go. Higher volume whitewater requires you to have a stronger sense of what the water is doing. One of the most important things to watch when you're kayaking big water rivers is your speed. If you lose speed, what happens, and this is true on any river, but it becomes accentuated on big water rivers. If you lose speed, you become subject to whatever the river does. If there's a big fold coming in on one side, it's gonna push you the other way, unless you have enough speed to anticipate it 
to hit it head on and then to continue downstream. So paddling efficiency becomes more important. You have to be able to take efficient strokes. You have to be able to take powerful strokes. And that requires a bit of technique. To maximize the power of your strokes, plant really good, strong vertical strokes. Plant your strokes early and hold them a little longer before you pull the stroke. That gives water pressure time to build on the power face of your blade so that when you pull, you're automatically moving faster than the water that you take the stroke in. Holding a stroke is an important skill if you want more power. The fastest water on the river is moving off of an obstacle and at a directional change. Directional changes are a form of acceleration. So being able to take a stroke where water is changing direction is a good way to improve the power of your stroke and to go with the water rather than against it. This can add a ton of power when it comes to taking a stroke. It's amazing how much more power you get out of a stroke if you time them better, you pull them more vertically, and you allow the blade to load. Sometimes in big water, you're not gonna be able to scout by looking directly downstream, and it's gonna be too far to get out and scout regularly outside of your boat. So one of the techniques that I use is moving to the side and paddling down the eddy lines. You don't even have to go all the way into the eddy to be able to scout downstream. You can keep moving downstream like a conveyor belt, step aside from all of the taller waves, and then move back in when you're ready for more fun. But you have to be careful on eddy lines because the eddy lines are prone to deeper whirlpools, big whirlpools, bigger folds, and lots of boils. When you do decide to eddy out in big water, plan on putting in some effort. Hit the eddy line with a lot of speed and make sure you lock it in over the boils. You got to be a little careful of eddies. You know, in smaller volume rivers, eddies give you a break. But on bigger volume rivers, eddies get a mind of their own. Sometimes they have big whirlpools on the eddy lines because the eddy lines are much larger. Sometimes there's eddies inside of eddies inside of eddies. And sometimes the eddies are actually a different elevation than the water that you're paddling. Some eddies sit really low and can be really difficult to climb out of. Some eddies sit really high and you can get rejected by a wall of water, unable to make it into the eddy. So eddies in big water require caution. One of the most defining features of big water rivers are the boils. Boils are really intimidating because when you first start paddling in them, they send you all over the place. Handling boils requires a specific skill that I call the lock-in. If you want more information on how to paddle in boily water, I'll link it below. The thing about really big boils is they can quickly push you offline or into a place you don't wanna go. They can separate you from someone who needs a hand. There's no fighting bigger boils, but sometimes you can anticipate them by watching the patterns of current when you get really good at predicting them, sometimes you can even use them to carry you where you want to go. As you paddle downstream in the calmer sections of a big water river, you'll notice the seams crossing in a zigzagging pattern. If you want to avoid the whirlpools, cross over the seam as it comes toward you. Just turn, cross over it, then straighten back up. And then as it comes back, turn, cross over it, and then straighten back up. That zigzagging pattern will keep you from finding a seam or getting stuck in a seam and finding yourself in a whirlpool. If you do find yourself in a whirlpool, the secret is not to panic. Whirlpools will let you out. If you swim, it will get so much worse. Swimming takes away that big flotation device, your kayak, and you'll end up sinking further down. You'll go deeper and you'll stay under longer. If you can stay in your boat and relax, you can hold your breath longer and you'll be up before you know it. They will let you out. The secret to escaping a really sticky or powerful whirlpool, though, is anticipating when you're coming back to the surface, rolling fast, and paddling in the same direction that the whirlpool is turning. If the whirlpool is turning really quickly to the left, turn to the left and paddle faster than the water of the whirlpool, and then up and out. It may take you a few tries, but that's a very effective way of getting out of a whirlpool when you need to. When I was on the Zambezi, there was a whirlpool eddy at Rapid 11 at lower water. When the water drops, it's no longer a barreling wave. And I ended up right into this really powerful whirlpool on river left. 
The thing about this Whirlpool was it wasn't just the normal surgy kind you find along an eddy line. It was a full Whirlpool eddy that just stayed. So what I did, I had to go deep, roll up, paddle in the same direction, go deep, roll up, paddle in the same direction, go deep, roll up, paddle in the same direction over and over again until I could finally time it. Every time I came to the surface, I looked and there was a surge that would actually move through and I had to wait on the surge to carry it out. I had to plant my paddle blade and my edge to carry the surge away from the whirlpool. But I was able to escape in my boat. Had I swam, it would have been way worse. So the secret is not to panic. You just have to work with it while it's happening. A big part of handling big water is learning how to stay on your toes, problem solve and figure things out like a puzzle. The more effectively you can do that and the better you can think on your feet and go with the flow, the more you're gonna enjoy big water kayaking, the more fun you'll have, and the more you can figure out how to use the water to go where you want. One of the questions I get a lot is, what do you do when there's really big waves? When you see waves that are a boat length high or even higher, how do you, how do you approach that? How do you get over them? The truth is most waves are gonna just send you right through and the bigger the white water, oftentimes the more powerfully you'll just get pushed through the water. You're not gonna stop. But in order to maneuver more effectively and to stay in control on big waves, leaning into the wave and taking a stroke on the backside of the wave as you straighten up, is a more effective technique to dealing with the crashes. Because this wave wasn't surging and barreling or crashing too hard, I was able to make sure that it stayed underneath my boat by positioning myself a little off angle and sweeping myself a little bit more straight as I hit the wave, but it forced the crash to go underneath my boat. The key with this is to take a stroke on the opposite side from the peak of the wave to make sure that you're countering the force that you'll get from the wave. Otherwise, it'll just flip you over. This works really, really good for flatter waves or waves that aren't surging as hard. Once waves start surging more steeply, you're not gonna be able to do this anymore. So approaching sideways and leaning into the wave will work better. If you hit the waves head on, you might get back ended or sent over the back of your boat. On this wave, I went so vertical on the lip of the wave that I went upside down and stern first. But I was able to pop it back upright before I even landed on my head. It's not uncommon in big wave trains, leaning to the side or positioning sideways to the wave and coming over would have been more effective, but it's not always as fun. One of the scariest parts of big water kayaking is the size of the holes. Holes can get massive. The thing about big water though that a lot of people don't realize is that big water has a lot of pressure and a lot of volume pushing downstream. So you're not likely to get stuck in any one spot. You're probably gonna flush through. Big water rivers are intimidating, but a lot of times, as long as you're aiming for the outflow or moving toward the outflow of the rapid, even if you go into a massive hole, you're probably gonna make it. The taller and rounder the foam pile of the hole, probably the better off you are to go underneath it and you'll pop out the other side, even after a pretty good thrashing. The secret is to look for outflow. Is there water surging through it or moving downstream? And if there is, chances are you'll be able to move through too. The really flat, powerful ledge holes are the ones I worry about. Ledge holes are a totally different beast and a lot of times on bigger water, those ledge holes will just hold you deeper for longer. You'll have to go really deep to escape. Punching directly into a hole is no longer an option. You have to either go over a foam pile or duck dive underneath it. To duck dive under a hole, it's important to get as streamlined as possible right as you get to the seam of the hole. You'll want to get as much speed as you can by paddling on the back side of the waves in front of it. Load your blade and get ready to pull yourself underneath the foam pile with one blade and then tuck as you go underneath the hole. If you can tuck and hold on to some green water at the same time while you go through the hole, you'll likely flush right underneath it and out. Another technique that's pretty effective is paddling really quickly toward the hole, flipping and holding as much water, green water, as you can 
to go underneath the hole than rolling on the back side. The catch is you need to know it's deep. If you try to punch directly into a hole though, you're just gonna get rejected and you're likely gonna surf. If you do find yourself in a really powerful hole, obviously paddle toward the outflow. You have to get aware enough to look for where is the escape, where is the water pushing out of the hole. If you can get there, it'll probably let you free. When you've run out of options, it's better if you can to stay in your boat. In big water, swimming is a last resort and not something that's a pleasant experience. Flush drowning can and does happen. So an easy way to get out of a hole and to help yourself flush out of the hole is to catch as many ends as possible and to flail. Free flailing in a hole can be really fun and can let you out really quickly. But if you're not careful, you can also get ripped out of your kayak or have a skirt implosion. So it's important to make sure that you're holding yourself strong in your kayak. It can really throw people off rolling in big water. Rolling in big water is different because oftentimes by the time you start your roll, the next wave is already crashing on you. And as those waves crash, they just knock you back over again and again and again. So the secret to rolling in big water is not getting caught in that cycle. If you do flip in the larger waves or get flipped by a boil or a hole, take a moment while you're upside down and feel the next wave hit your kayak, then roll. You'll be on the back side of the wave coming down as you roll, and you'll have time to straighten up for the next move and even drive around the next wave. Sometimes when you flip in big water, you'll end up in the boils or near an eddy line. And then it's gonna feel real squirrely when you're trying to roll. And whenever you try to start your roll, you might feel your paddle blade just sink. A lot of people freak out. In those situations, it's best to feel around with your paddle blade until you feel pressure on the power face of your blade. The moment you feel pressure, all you have to do is hip snap. The weird thing is, if you're on an eddy line, that pressure may come from the side. If it does, just hip snap off of it. Focus on feeling pressure with your paddle instead of just trying to do it 90 degrees to the water. Swimming in big water is really dangerous. It's something that you really have to pay attention to. Flush drowning is a real possibility and there can be so much water or so much water pushing on you that you stay deep. So the secret is to hold on to as much volume as you can, holding onto your boat and gear, keeping your kayak upside down to trap air in it, I've successfully gotten a breath from my kayak before when I've needed it. But the point is you need to get creative, finding ways to get that breath, time your breath, and to stay with your boat and your gear. Another technique you can try if you have your boat is you can lay on it and paddle it like a surfboard. And you can paddle your boat downstream. And a lot of times that'll get you pretty far or at least keep you breathing. But in big water, it's oftentimes so powerful that you just don't have another option. You can also use a dry bag like this one for more swimming flotation if you keep one in your lap or a paddle for extra swimming power. If you're collecting swimmers in big water, don't try to put them on your stern and drag them the traditional way. Put swimmers on your bow with their legs up around your boat. That way you can paddle them more effectively to safety and communicate. The secret to a rescue of any kind on any type of whitewater is good communication. It may be preferable to get somebody back in their kayak to dump out their boat and to get them back in the boat without going to shore. On really high volume rivers, getting to the bank could be a very long paddle or it could even be more dangerous. So working on safety techniques to be able to empty out a boat and get somebody back inside on the water and on water rescue is vital. All right, so I hope that was helpful. It's super fun. I love big water rivers and I love the speed and it accentuates everything else that you have to do with good kayaking. Big water is the ultimate test of whether or not you can work with the river rather than against it. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Ask any questions that you have in the comments. There's more on the way and I'm so stoked that you guys are here watching. I'll see you on the river.